I remember when we, we got married and uh, when it was time to make love, the poet would switch off the lights. So I'd be like, girl, how am I supposed to see you? <laughs> you can see me, but I can't see you. We're going to put on the lights and get this action going, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Birthday after birthday after birthday. <laughs> balloons everywhere. The balloon is almost <laughs> finished. Let me see that other one. <laughs> Our baby turned four years old. Our baby turned four. How exciting. So, it was mine and my baby girl's birthday on the 26th and the 29th. Um, and family came over from Lesotho, from everywhere, from Rustenburg, and we sort of had like a family celebration moment. Oh. Yeah, we couldn't upload last week because we were in the buzz of birthdays. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're so excited to be back. Before we go anywhere, please subscribe to this channel. We really appreciate all the subscriptions. Please like the video. Please share. We're now trying to grow the channel, trying mm -hmm. to expand the family. You know, you know what's up. And please comment. Yes, please comment. We are loving all the interactions in the comment section. Yeah. So today, uh, we thought to talk about a topic that's really close to my heart. Um, and that's colorism or skin color or whatever my, you want to call Michael it. Michael Jackson syndrome. No, that's inappropriate. White bread, brown bread. Coffee, cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is it so important to you? I mean, it goes without saying that skin color, yellow bone, dark bone, <laughs> whatever bone is a thing. Like, it's a conversation that I'm glad the world is now having. And that we're starting to celebrate dark people a lot more. Um, you know, black girl magic thing. You know, it's our time. It's our time. <laughs> um, yeah, but I grew up. I grew up with a complex around my complexion, and I tried to think about where it stems from, like where it all began, and I struggled to figure that out. But the earliest memory I have around complexion or color or whatever it may be or when i when i became conscious about my skin color was when i was still very young um my family calls me mantu uh, they still call me mantu me my mom and my brother are the only two people that are still calling me mantu i think my cousins here and there call me mantu but that wasn't the issue um the name wasn't the issue <laughs> the name wasn't the issue what bothered me is that my grandma, my mom's, my dad's mom, had a dog that was also called Mansu. <laughs> and it was black, 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 and it was lazy. Like, I didn't like that dog. And I just knew that both of us were called Mansu, and I just never understood it, you know? I was just like, why am I Mansu, and why is the dog Mansu? Yeah, my family has some explaining to do. I should ask them. Why were we called together called Mansu? <laughs> was I named after the dog or was the dog named after me? Like, I don't think any of them justify. You know? What would you do if you <laughs> if you and your dog um, shared a name? Well, Rex. Well, <laughs> My nickname, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's little Eko. But Rex, yeah, Rex is like, a, wow. My love, how do you feel sharing a name with a dog? Immaterial. But you're also T Rex and it's a dinosaur and it's really powerful, so that's what's up. But anyway, 
um yeah so that's that's where i think it, it that's the earliest memory i have about you know being aware of my skin color and me feeling like huh you know um and then every other time after that i mean being a black girl living in in the world you you know be awakened to that here and there but it's not until i became a mom that it really became a thing mm. Mm. Colorism thing for me has never really been much of a thing and maybe some of you would say it's cause you're light-skinned uh, But uh, but yeah, I do come from predominantly light-skinned family uh, My parents are light. My sister is light. However, my brother my big brother Tato is uh, dark-skinned um, So I remember growing up noticing that but it wasn't really much of a thing It was just really like hey, why is he? darker than all of us, you know, kind of thing. Um, so it, it would be an interesting discussion to have with him. Um, but yeah, I don't really remember it being like a huge thing in our family. So it's not until I became a mom that, you know, this color thing started coming to my face. Yo, guys, human beings. And what I find is it's, it's older people, it's like the older generation women. Who are not afraid to like say things in your face and think you can all laugh about it like there was a time where in pick and pay it's myself it's rex is our girl she's in a trolley and i'm pushing you were in another aisle somewhere because at that moment when that lady approached us you were not around us um so this lady comes and says wow do you want to have a you're such a beautiful girl and you know i'm wanting to respond to me like oh thank you so much and she's like do you want to have and then I'm like, yes, she's my child. And I'm like, ah, ah. And I'm like, at that point, I'm like, so confused. And she's like, I'm okay, Jay. And I'm like, I'm so hungry. I'm like, I'm how? And I'm like, yo, yo, I was dumbfounded. Like, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, you wanna. And the funny thing, it wasn't the first time, um, you know, that someone approached me. Usually people come and they're like, is this your child? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, my tool. They, you know, they're a little bit, but they never say anything further than that. But this time, this lady had it in herself to be like, no, no ways, no ways. She's not your child. She's too light to be your child. And then I was just like, you know, and I'm like, oh, politely, oh, thank you, thank you. And then I push the trolley. This same lady spots us again, now the three of us, as we're exiting pick and pay. And then she comes to me again. Now she's standing here. Now, now Rex is now pushing the trolley. And I'm walking slightly behind them. And then she comes and stands like this. Like this close proximity. And then she's like, Oh, yeah, I know. I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I the twins. My, my husband and my child's twins, you know. And then she's like, Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? <laughs> That's crazy, man. Show this lady legit, mm. and and then I'm like, you know, I, 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 I was just like, why does she keep following me and saying all these things and wanting me to respond? That's like, crazy talk, man. I didn't know what to say. She carries on. She's just like, I just and that name comes over again. Yeah, so that, that was crazy. I remember that day um, because I didn't know why she kept on fuming, you know, because um, I was. So the first part I was in the aisles and then I came back and I saw them interacting, but I was just like a little bit of a distance away from mm -hmm. you guys. And all of a sudden, anyway, we get towards the car and Dimpo is just really fuming. So I'm like, what's happening? She says, did you hear what that lady was saying to me? I said, no. So she proceeds to explain to me what this lady was saying. And I said, are you serious? Where is she? And then she had just all of a sudden disappeared. So I was like, that's crazy. That, that's really, really crazy. Um, you can't, firstly, why do, why do they assume that she's not your child when she's with you? Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, like, since, <laughs> since when does skin color determine if a child is yours or not? Mm -hmm. And thirdly, like, wh who does she think she is? You know what I mean? To talk to you like that. She mm -hmm. doesn't even know you. Um, evidently she's dealing with her own issues because mm -hmm. like which woman says that to another mm -hmm. woman 
So I was fuming, like then we got started fuming in the car, just talking about this issue that like, this is crazy. Mm. This is really, really crazy. Um, Ayana, Ayana, like Ayana is, that's Ayana's mom, mm. you know, that's, you're her mom. And so it's got nothing to do with mm. this skin tone. You know, I, and I don't even think it, it's a, she has issues thing, because I generally find it to be a thing amongst older generation black women. Mm. Um, or maybe that those are the women that I come across more often. Maybe it would be different. I'd have a different perspective if I was exposed to a lot more variety of people. But a lot, I can count more than five, six times where an older woman has approached me to say, is this your child? And I'm like, yeah. And it's like, I'm Soje, you know, all the mm. time. I'm Soje. And I'm just like, yeah, she's my child. And then I, like... When I picked it up, I started saying, yeah, and that you know, her father is light skinned, her father's light skinned. And then, you know, I just always like walk. Ah, this what specific lady at Pick and Me decided to follow me and further make it about beauty. So it was no longer even about skin, it was not even about beauty. You know, and 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 this is something I mentioned before. I I never know how to respond to an older person like I would anyone else. So they block you. I was just like so you froze a bit. I froze. Mm. I didn't. I, I, you know, it's it feels disrespectful to be like, uh -uh, you know. Um. So I just walked away. I was just like confused and like angry. You know. I think it's it's a mom thing, man. I don't know any mother who would not want their child to be associated to them. That's my child. Mm. Like that's my child. I I carried my child for ten months in my stomach, and you know, for people to come and want me to justify to them that she is my child because we are two different skin tones um seems a little bit mm. off to me you know it is off you know i i, I remember after that day I, you know i, I told him so that this is the last time someone is going to ask you that mm -hmm. um if this is your child uh, generally assume it you know it's very rude to ask a mother who's walking with their child is this your child mm -hmm. and then after the mother says okay we are yes she is and then you're going to raise mm. the skin color thing. Um, it is an older generation thing. I mean, apartheid and, you know, who was beautiful in those days and who was not. And so people are carrying those things into this generation. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's troubling so that there are still people like that, you know, who, who look at uh, amongst us as black people, who's light and who's not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and as a result, this is more beautiful than that. Um, it's definitely an apartheid legacy thing um, that needs to end with our generation, you know. Um, I don't think we should still be walking around and saying, hey, you know, you, you married to a dark-skinned guy or hey, to... I, I guess it's, it's slightly different with men, black men, because I, I remember growing up a time where we had more Thai digs and more Tyrese um, and the measure of like handsomeness with men was tall dark and handsome you remember that time mm. and i was I used to grow up thinking man i'm not tall man i'm not dark o okay handsome you know <laughs> we can argue it uh but the other <laughs> but the other two are definitely wasn't um and so that became the measure of ah uh, man you know um beauty in in with men but shame with women it's always been quite brutal mm. you know um always always been quite brutal i wish it will end with our generation so that boy and i don't have to think about those things because those things they don't make sense i believe it's ended honestly i believe it's ended um i don't think there's we, we fully grasp the work that's being done by a lot of black women around the world around celebrating skin color mm. celebrating our natural hair that work is doing a lot for people like me who grew up with a consciousness of skin color. Nowadays, you stand proud to be dark. Do you know what I mean? So I think, I think it's, 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 if it hasn't ended, it's coming to an end. And it's, it's, it's based on the work of a lot of women around the world who are now standing bold and tall to say, we are gorgeous. Like we are gorgeous the way we are, you know? So currently, like, where are you with, with skin color? Do you still have a complex? Oh, I'm I'm this shade of no. tone, and I'm married to this guy. Was no, no, mm -hmm. no. I I I don't know. And and this is what I I was having a conversation with uh, my sister-in-law. Um. So if you follow me on you know on 
Instagram and social media, you realize that I love Snapchat. And I always make reference to the fact, oh, Snapchat's a yeah, too sad. You know, you know, the perspective with, with Snapchat is that filters make you look lighter and, you know, all those things. And that's never been my perspective. That's a funny thing. I realized it as we were having this conversation. Snapchat makes you have flawless skin. Like, I'm just like, yo, my skin is so flawless. But what we are not noticing is automatically it makes your skin look lighter. Um, whereas I'm just wanting to have clear flawless skin um, that it looks like i'm trying to have a lighter skin whatever on mm -hmm. photos when it's not really the case but that's a, that's one of the first things that i noticed about you was was your the quality of your skin mm -hmm. you know it wasn't like i i noticed your skin tone it was mm -hmm. just dimple has always had flawless skin mm -hmm. you know um, until i felt pregnant yeah and then you you bounced back <laughs> i'm only bouncing back now guys when i felt pregnant you i grew molds so that's what I was trying to show in my makeup video that I have a lot of molds and my grandma is like one of those gorgeous women but with molds and she wears her molds so proudly funny enough and it suits her but when I felt pregnant I had like lots of molds and then when I gave birth they subsided but they never went away and I became very conscious of my skin um, based on the fact that it was no longer that flawless and then only this year, I think, I started, you know, putting in the work, drinking vitamins, taking extra uh, care. It's not where I want it to be, and that's when I find that I want to, I'm more comfortable with the filter, or whatever it may be. Um, but it's getting to a place where I'm liking it again, you know. Um, but mm. I think my comment was just that, is that these filters, they make your skin flawless, but they also make you lighter. I wonder if they can make your skin flawless, but keep your skin tone. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, but I like filters. Like, and I'm, I'm not ashamed of filters. Like, why ever? <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, growing up, um, uh, and I used to, like, once we, we understood, you know, this whole colorism thing, and that, you know, people supposedly want to be light-skinned. I used to wonder why, why do you want to be light skinned? Because a, a lot of light skinned people will be able to identify. Um, it, it used to be difficult, like just like playing in the sun, I grew up playing soccer. And so when you play in the sun and you're light skinned, you get what we call the chubaba. I don't know, what, what is the chubaba? Blemishes? I think it's blemishes. Yeah, it, like used to, I used to get the chubaba all the time and I used to hate it. And the guys who were darker skinned never used to get the chubaba. <laughs> You know, so it was difficult to play outside. Also, if you go to like holidays and you're playing outside a lot, like your 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 forehead would be super dark, <laughs> and <laughs> everything here would be light, and so you'd have two two different colors and look like an alien. So I used to be like, man, no, man, like if I had a choice, I I would go dark, you know, because then it hides a lot of things. Um, acne, acne. You know, it's mm. much more evident in light skinned mm. people. You know, I remember when I had a bout of acne when I was a teenager. I used to have dark, dark spots. Even when we met. Even when we met, you remember, you met me with a lot of acne. And I used to wear like hoodies just to try to hide it. Um, man, God has made us in all different shapes and forms. Mm. And the idea is to love yourself mm. the way that He's made you. Um, I, I guess that's what we're going to teach our children. Mm. Um, Ayana's gonna, is light skinned, but who knows? our next child and the next one, how they're going to be. Um, we teach them to love themselves, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that's the thing. I don't think it's any of our responsibility to try determine how anyone should be or how who should be proud of what. Um, I think it's so unfair because we don't walk in each other's shoes, guys. The, our life experiences, some of us have traumatized us. Some mm -hmm. people more traumatic than others. I mean, for me, it was a dog, but for someone else, it was years of bullying and whatever it may be and then they figure out a way to cope and feel good about themselves and then we're going to be the same people to to you know to scrape off the the scars and bring back the wounds we have why you know so if someone wants to color their inject themselves and make themselves lighter if it makes their heart and spirit shine girl let your heart shine like i'm so against those conversations what i am for is the celebration of dark skin I am for that, I'm for that, I'm for that, I'm for that. Because it's doing a lot for, you know, dark-skinned girls. Our children that are still coming and, you know, young people are going to grow in an age where they're looking at Bozo Zibini and, you know, a lot of Bo Viola Davis and a lot of women who are proudly black and are making it okay and, 
and actually incredible to be dark skinned. And I think that's that what we need to focus on the celebration and you know the era we are stepping into in terms of celebrating blackness. But trying to figure out are you with us? Are you celebrating blackness with us? <laughs> Maybe some people are not there yet. Maybe they need to heal. You know, they need to heal and realize that you know what? I love my skin color and then they'll come. We mustn't try to force people to move along with us. That I don't like. I'm not for um to men it's not nice it's bullying i feel like yeah bully yeah you know find a way to make someone's heart and spirit happy and shine that's what we should be for not to tell them that they're not this and they shouldn't do this they shouldn't you know yeah that's what makes me a little bit angry okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only thing in closing um i remember when we we got married and uh when it was time to make love, the power would switch off the lights. So I'd be like, girl, how am I supposed to see you? <laughs> you can see me, but I can't see you. We're going to put on the lights and get this action going, you know what I mean? Uh, smile so that I can see you, baby. We love you guys. Uh, thank you for being with us today. Please subscribe right now. Yeah. Whoever is watching and you know deep down you haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe <laughs> button um, and put a comment behind, you know, what, what's your experience with colorism um, in South Africa and yeah. Africa or the world. Like the video, it also helps us to just push up the algorithm. Um, but yeah, thank you. That's, that's us for today. See you guys next, next week. week. Bye.